Okay, so this is the last video for option C, freshwater for IP geography. And the syllabus point is growing pressures on major wetlands and efforts to protect them, such as the Ramsar Convention and a case study. So let's look at some pressures. So a wetland is an area of land whose soil is saturated with moisture, either permanently or seasonally. Such areas may also be covered partially or completely by shallow pools of water. Wetlands include swamps, marshes, bogs, among others. And the water found in wetlands can be salt water, fresh water, or brackish. So the uses of wetlands, like the kind of purposes of them, is, that is flood control, prevents pollution, prevents storm damage, protects the public and private drinking water supply, and it protects groundwater supply of water, also protects fisheries. Threats, however, are that it there is this idea of um, habitat fragmentation, polluted runoff, water level changes, and invasive species, especially in rapidly urbanizing areas, agricultural runoff with pesticides, construction of dams and barrages, and also the dumping of garbage, which would obviously deter all of these like very crucial roles that wetlands have. Okay, let's look at the Wham Ra Ramsar Convention. So this is the international convention or agreement that protects some of the world's most important wetlands. It it has 168 parties, it was signed in 1971 in Iran, and it has 2,100 sites. So this is like a little uh, slide I found from the Wetlands International, and it basically shows us when it was adopted, which we just mentioned, the mission is the conservation and wise use of wetlands through national actions and international cooperation as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development. Three pillars are wise use um, of all wetlands, there's designation of priority wetlands as wetlands of international importance, Ramsar sites, international cooperation for shared wetlands and their resources including transboundary sites. Okay now we're going to move on to the case study. So the case study we're going to use is the Kissimmee River Restoration Project um, because this is a very crucial wetland. So here's just a map of it and some of the like um, methods that have been used um, it looks kind of complicated but um, I just thought it was like a good thing to show like diff different projects so the red ones are to be completed the black like these ones and these ones are already done so obviously there's a lot of different kind of restoration efforts being made to result in environmental improvements um, over the past years um, yeah okay so Oh, this also shows you like the location of the Kissimmee Restoration Project and the lakes. There's many different lakes here involved. Okay, let's look at more detailed information. So the location is Florida, USA, north of the Everglades, 5,000 miles squared area and it's 5 kilometers wide. The river length is 145 kilometers. In the 1960s, I think that's 1960s, not 06. Um, the river was channelized to help drain flood waters and flood protection. For flood protection, the effects of channelization led to the river drying up and damage upon egret and heron populations in a two-thirds decrease, and largemouth bass populations also fell. Bald eagles fell by 70%. So this channelization had a lot of negative consequences on the ecosystem. So the Kissimmee River Restoration Project was introduced as a method of de-channelization and other methods methods were introduced so this began in 1999 and was completed in 2015 so that took over a decade restoration cost was 414 hundred million dollars um, it involved re reintroducing the natural flow of water and its natural ecosystem then because of that oxygen concentration levels improved undesirable floating plants were removed from the river channel water flow increased jobs were created in fishing and um, however, despite this, there is a growing population in the area and industries and econo econ economic growth. Um, wells sink, wells are sinking and saltwater intrusion has become a threat. And there's also this threat of crop failure and fish dying from the increased salt concentration. So there's obviously still some issues despite this like very successful restoration project.